It was the sound of laughter that I remember most from my visit to some of the characters that feature in the most talked about sequel to Kamina Venice Skull. In the Rare Old Times Part 2 was launched in June and the copies are flying off the shelves. And Brady brought in this fella one night and he left her home. There's no way that would have ever learned to do this. This is what I'm saying. Leo Gordon was the inspiration behind the first book. He was always recording people's stories about what it was like to grow up in Enniskillen, fearing that the stories would be lost over time. Continuing his work, his daughter Mary has produced a second book to keep not only his memory, but the memories of others alive. I had the pleasure of meeting up with Brian, Mary, Bridie and Pauling, and over a cup of tea they took me on a journey back in time, as they recalled their memories of when Market Street and Water Street were enemies in the football, the experience of having their first orange, the excitement when the Yanks came to town, and when black taffeta skirts were the height of fashion. One day I was going out to visit the chaplain out and uh, the great thing about it is we'd always got American comics and stuff like that and that's why we went out to catch him actually. But uh, I was walking up the road with the, the chaplain when it long the colonel came and uh, of course the chaplain was saluting and he'd be heavy down and I was only a wee small boy and he hit me on top of the head and I went out like that <laughs> straight out like a light. So I woke up, I came to and there was on a bed in the, one of the huts and the nurses were there and they were, they were lovely too. Like, and they were all over with me with chewing gum and sweets and it couldn't be better actually. And then they got a jeep to bring me home and they brought me home and I was delighted because all the children in the square was looking to see Brian's coming home in a big jeep and everything. And they had a box of oranges and apples and, and comics and chewing gum. They couldn't have given me much more anyway, like you know, and it was just terrific. And then we had a feast afterwards. You know? So that was the first time I seen an orange actually. I think with Polly sitting here, those memories coming back. Uh, growing up in Water Street, we were at the centre of the town, which was excellent, you know. And um, it was a sad time. My father had died, and he died quite suddenly in the July. And at that time, uh, for maybe six months to a year, was it that you wore a patch? That's right. Mm. A patch on your, on your shoulder, you know, your dad had died, or your, you know, whoever it was. And basically, you didn't go to the cinema, there was no TV, there was no radio, you know, that was a quiet time. And I had been in the pantomime the year before, Sean Mulhern used to run the pan, or was the oh. producer mm -hmm. of, the, of the pantomimes. And um, I thought, you know, I'm missing Daddy so much, and we had to do all these things, you know, that, that was expected of you, and you did it. But then my mother said, to me, get back to the pantomime, go and do your rehearsals, and all. We were only in the crowd scenes of that, it wasn't that important. But the fun and the, the, the comradeship that was there was just absolutely fantastic, you know. It didn't matter whether it was Pauline doing principal boy, wasn't it? Or Island whatever. Island Patrick. Island Patrick. <laughs> Everyone was the same. We were all the same and we had great fun. So for me, the pantomimes at that time were, were terribly important. When I reached about 11 or 12, a nun in the convent called Sister Mona, who was just a saint, mm -hmm. took a great interest in me and brought me back in the evenings uh, to teach me singing lessons, to give me singing lessons, you know. And they uh, should stand me at one end of the classroom and say, look up at Mount Lourdes now, open your throat, get get the breath out, you know. I haven't, I've never forgotten anything she taught me. And of course then I was at all the faces singing and all that sort of stuff, you know. And then from there I, I graduated into the shows and uh, pantomimes and you name it. So I, and I cycled a lot. Mm. I was in the cycling club. <laughs> I was in everything. I used to, um, I couldn't swim, but I used to yacht for Jimmy Carson. His, Jimmy's in the, in the book now, you know. But I, I, there was not, and of course, like these two ladies, I was into dancing, into dancing big time. Both in Matt Mick Flanagan's mm. Way to Hut dance hall and the town hall and anywhere else you know.